gentlemen, let me introduce to you the Cinema Snob. Rock, rock, Cinema Snob. Rock, rock, Cinema Snob. Rock, 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 Cinema Snob. Bad for me to God, thank you very much. Rock, rock, Cinema Snob. Rock, rock, Cinema Snob. Continuing on with Fultuary, today we're spotlighting the 1982 film Manhattan Baby. Fulci movies often have alternate titles attached to them, and in this case, the alternate title may as well have been, hey, they can't all be the beyond. Again written by frequent collaborator Dardano Sacchetti, the film was originally scripted under the title of The Evil Eye until it was changed to Manhattan Baby, obviously as a way to capitalize on the hit film Look What's Happened to Rosemary's Baby. After its 1984 release in the States, some U.S. versions even titled the film Eye of the Evil Dead. Hey look, we don't care what you retitle it so long as it sounds kind of like another movie. Intending the film to be more of a technological gothic horror film, three-fourths of the movie's budget was cut, resulting in it being the simple story of a family who brings back an ancient evil from Egypt that causes blindness, possession, and a very scared babysitter. In other words, it's not very good. Why on earth would I choose this for Fultuary? <laughs> Let's just get this Manhattan baby over with. Yeah, it's not Manhattan. That's obviously Queens. Here's the father, George, doing what all dads do best, getting presents. It's, uh, for Susie. She's never seen a real Egyptian scorpion. You don't know much about buying gifts for your daughter, do you? Here you go, son, a fucking anaconda. Okay, I already made plenty of deaf jokes in the Beyond review. I've completely run out of them. Tourist attractions are always way smaller than you imagine they would be. Plus, if you rub the Sphinx's nose, you get free breadsticks at the Pizza Hut by the pyramids. Wait, this isn't Egypt at all. This is the Beetlejuice Neither World. Just think, thousands of years ago, all of this was an elaborate Nickelodeon game show. Something tells me this prologue only means that someone is a big fan of The Exorcist. But since when would a movie like Manhattan Baby want to capitalize on something else? The mother, Emily, is excited during the trip, but young Susie is wondering when the animatronic mouse is going to sing to her and bring her pizza. Something's bound to happen here. Creepiest Chuck E. Cheese character. This lady shops at the same contact lens shop as Blind Emily. Honey, what did we say about passing notes to creepy blind women? They can't read them. I bet she has something weird and mystical to say. Tombs are for the dead. Really? That's what you crossed over into the real world to say? That tombs are for dead people? What's next? Are you gonna tell me food goes in here? I came here for a history lesson, damn it. But there's no doubt in my mind that, that stone holds the key to mysteries that have stymied cryptologists for years. It might be the answer to that tomb of Hubnumenor. That's a lot of words for a story that's just gonna end with severe eye plucking. To gain the treasure, you must conquer the tallest mound of shit known to man. Now to let the soundtrack take over. It's not that I object to the American release using music from Mario 64, but why? To enter the tomb, you must first take a bite of the ancient snake cookie, or turn it, I guess that works too. That's why we don't fuck with things in Egypt. They all have secret snake cabinets and Mortal Kombat death traps. Watch out! Oh! 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 
well, damn, Alfred Molina was really good in this. This vacation is starting to take a very negative turn. Don't let Lucio Fulci give you laser eye surgery, it'll just make your eyes explode. Look at it like this. This is still a better vacation than going to Kankakee, Illinois. Unfortunately, George is temporarily blinded with his sight set to return within a year. I guess he won't need his glasses for a while. Okay, sure. Whatever makes you feel better, Dad. George and Emily's other kid, uh, wait a minute, is that... It is! It's Bob! Bob has returned! What, you don't know who Bob is? You think I put this house by the cemetery poster up for nothing? My name is Bob, and they're on the starting grid set for the big race, Yogi. On your marks, go! That's right, Bob, the kid with the out-of-place adult-sounding name and even more adult-sounding voice is back. Is he going to steal the show in this movie, too? I hate to tell you this, kiddo, but there's no way he'll ever be a major league player. Well, I didn't ask you, did I, lousy lesbian? <laughs> oh, Bob, how we've missed you. This movie is not worthy of your tomfoolery. Wait, his name is Bob in this one, too, right? Tommy. Tommy, where do you think you're going? Tommy? Fuck that. His name is Bob. It will always be Bob. Meanwhile, in a sitcom establishing shot, Dad isn't taking to this whole blindness thing. Don't sound so bitter. One does not necessarily hmm. deduce That's easy for you to say, because you're not blind. I mean, what the hell do you have to worry about? Well, cheer up, Dad. We can get you a seeing eye dog. <laughs> Okay, well, maybe not. I guess a walking stick will do. Go back to more of Bob being awkward. Okay, Tommy. I take back what I said. You'll be a great major leaguer. Where? On what? On your cross. Bob, what did we tell you about ripping open your sister's shirt? Emily is a reporter and mainly spends her days dealing with Luke. He's the funniest guy in the office. He tells himself that in the mirror every morning. And what is with the Egyptian necklace that Susie got? Look, the music is telling you not to wear that, so you should probably throw it away. As the movie goes on, I've noticed that Bob's voice has changed. Not that it's getting deeper, it's just that it's a different actor dubbing him than in House by the Cemetery. Damn, it's really stormy outside. It's gonna wake up Paul and Jamie from Mad About You. George was wearing his glasses earlier, so I'm surprised he's not wearing a sleep mask now. Susie's having some bad dreams, and this music is a little familiar. <laughs> well, when you hire Fabio Fritzi to do the music, the soundtrack will be excellent, but it may just be music he's reused from the beyond. Uh, she's probably got other things on her mind rather than the music. <laughs> Look at the bright side. At least it didn't make you puke up your own intestines. <laughs> That's next week's movie. Ah, the city that never sleeps, except when it does. Give us some more backstory about this curse, please. I'm confused. I think it's like the temple where I had my accident. Could have been a consecrated temple whose members worship the forces of evil. Yeah, that's nice. Why are you still wearing your glasses? Sure, he's probably wearing them to keep the light out, but I prefer to think otherwise. It makes me feel smarter. Perhaps Dad got a recording that he can use. Ah! <laughs> nope, he accidentally recorded himself stepping on a thumbtack. Things are sure getting weird around here. An unfinished Rubik's Cube in 1982? Impossible! Uh-oh, you ended up with the evil Trumpy. This one can only do terrible things. 
Like ripoff poltergeist, that monster. Someone please help Bob, he's the movie's only hope! <laughs> Perhaps you should have left that message for your mom, or anyone else who could read it. All Dad needed to do was get shot in the eyes with lasers again. This movie was ahead of its time in optical science. This sure is time for a jog, isn't it? Emily, I have to find out what it was that I saw in that tomb. You should also find your son. Oh, there he is. What the hell was that whole walking through the door portal and the mirror message all about? Explain that to me, not this. The sacred symbol of the Grand Shadow. A god named Hapadubanar, who was worshipped more than 5,000 years ago. Very little is known about it. You just made that up. Now just tell me this is all the work of the Bye Bye Man and I'll be on my way. The kids are playing hide-and-seek with the babysitter who, no joke, is named Jamie Lee. They probably figured naming her Lori Smith's Grove Sam Hain Haddonfield would be too obvious. And if you're a babysitter who isn't properly trained in handling snakes, then why did I even hire you? Monster attacks, though? Well, that's more rare. Don't worry, it's not a real monster. It's just a classic Tommy Jarvis prank. Eh, at least the other people in the building are probably fine. <laughs> Just a slight elevator malfunction, I'm sure. Wouldn't it be something if that had nothing to do with the Egyptian curse going on? Hey, Emily, I changed my silly glasses. I'm trying out new material. Perhaps I could entertain you and your family. Did you hear? Did she tell you, Jamie, it won't open the door? I heard. I will open it up with one of my magic tricks. I know I'm a small kid, but a better buck you won't open that door with magic. Bob prefers you not patronize him, thank you very much. Locus Cadabra. Open Sesame! Well, this dude can't die fast enough. Look! Um, okay. Thank you. Usually movies make you deal with the annoying characters all throughout the thing. <laughs> Not Fulci, but uh, what happened to Luke's body? Well, that's what happens when you bite into a melted York peppermint patty. And when will the kids learn not to track sand in the house? Well, it makes a hell of a lot more sense than him disappearing turning into a pile of sand. George, am I crazy? Careful, movie. Your dialogue's starting to get stupid. I may not be taking you seriously anymore. Meanwhile, Susie is seriously considering breaking Dad's strict no-touching-the-thermostat policy. This movie is so slow-moving, it's like waiting for a picture to develop. Damn it, that doesn't mean I actually want to see your Polaroids. I don't care what is on the picture. <laughs> oh my god, someone put their cigarette out on it. The picture is found by some random lady, and then it's taken to the right man for the job, a Mr. Adrian Mercado. That's actually his character's name. It's good he was brought in on this, considering that's also a name from Rosemary's Baby. He's a little distracted, though. He found out his wife is still playing adult footsie in the New York Ripper. Hopefully that doesn't slow down his research. Ancient jewel symbolizes the eye of evil, the negative counterpoint of Aleph, the principle of all being. I always figured Lucio Fulci's autobiography would have eye in the title and would also feature numerous drawings of eyes. Quick, someone let the parents know. This is for you. It concerns your children. 
Well, it's all dirty now. Thanks for nothing. Eh, I'll open this later. How important could it be? She's right by Adrian Marcado's Antiques. That's across the street from Reagan McNeil's candy shop. And where the hell is Bob during all this? <laughs> So Bob is desperate to have his parents die by tripping them down the stairs? Oh, I see how it is. The kids are missing. Where could they? Oh, there they are. God, this movie's so intense, like they don't need a babysitter. Where's Jamie Lee? Where is Jamie Lee? I think Jamie Lee is off riding shotgun in a semi-truck with Stacy Keach as they search for a killer. No one can figure out the mystery of this picture. Perhaps John Landis can figure it out. <laughs> Damn, and he was just about to tell them that the picture is simply a necklace dangling in front of the lens. Wouldn't it have been easier just to do that instead of summoning a snake? Doesn't matter, it just ends up in Susie's hand for some reason anyway. My god, you guys went to Central Park without me? I bet I know who has all the answers. Bob. Susie always screams when she goes on a voyage. What do you mean? It's a part of the rules. Okay, I have a more important question. What the fuck is Jawbones and where can I go see it? Bob explains to his dad that he and his sister have taken voyages to, uh, let's just call it the further. It's one of the things that was probably cut from the budget. Tommy, are you lying to me? I knew it. I knew I would end up getting yelled at. I'm gonna go to sleep. Well, you're grounded anyway for entering Hell's Portal with your sister. Again, they've gone to the right person. Adrian is the one who's dubbed by Edward Mannix. He always knows the answers. And that's all while looking like Peter Stormare's burnt-out Italian brother. Your daughter is in great danger. Ooh, is this where we play who's gonna lose their eyes by the end of this? Now to get rid of Susie's evil necklace. And while we're at it, let's throw away her jellies as well, and her swatch watches. But we'll keep the scorpion. That was a gift. Perhaps the mystery will be solved by heading through horror movie hallway. It's not really this thin, but the lens sure is. By God, honey, this is a madhouse. We just painted this wall yesterday. And our daughter's acting weird. She's posing for the poster for that movie Manhattan Baby. Now let's jumpstart this exorcist finale pronto. Leave me alone with her. Okay, molesting a demon out of someone is not a thing. You're the worst parents for listening to him. How quickly are they gonna regret leaving those two alone together? Mama! Help me! Clean up your semen and get the fuck out of my house. But not before another exposition dump. A force that has seized your daughter's mind and is now using her as a medium for its, its own dark and wicked malefactions. Yes, yes, we've all read William Peter Blatty. We don't need this exposition. I'm sure God will handle all of this. Susie, a prayers are rejected. Well, so much for that. Professor Touchy and in-camera effects it is. Good thing the hospital has one of these machines left. The staff kept hooking them up to skeletons for some reason. Let's get our best doctors in on this. <laughs> what? No one told me Bruno Mattei was in this? Don't look into the eye. You know what will happen. In seven days, you won't necessarily die, but you will forget you even saw Manhattan Baby. Dr. Fulci, meanwhile, puts in his thinking pipe and has solved the problem. Little Susie swallowed a snake, and there's only one cure. So much for Susie! And again, where the hell's the babysitter? <laughs> Poor Jamie Lee. Eh, that's still better than her fate from Halloween Resurrection. So after having a staring contest with the ancient eye necklace, I'm sure something came out of this. I think your daughter is out of harm's way for now. 
There has been a transference. I have substituted for your daughter. What? It worked for Father Karras and everything totally turned out fine there, right? Can't wait to see this happy ending. That's slightly terrifying. Uh-oh, this scene had better not get graphic. I have a feeling this is going to get awfully bloody. Even with seeing the strings and that these are clearly puppets, this is still way more realistic and terrifying than bad CGI birds or anything in Birdemic. <laughs> Right side, you kept your eyeballs. All the heroes win the eyeball game in this film. That's the real twist. And then he throws it into the sea so that it can rest alongside the Titanic. It doesn't matter, the blind woman is just gonna sell someone else a mogwai anyway. <laughs> It's over. It never really started. Manhattan Baby wasn't one of Fulci's most successful films. Not only were Dardano Sacchetti and co-writer Elisa Briganti displeased with the film, but even Fulci himself called it terrible. The film ended the partnership between Lucio Fulci and producer Fabrizio De Angelis, who produced some of Fulci's more notable films like Zombie, The Beyond, House by the Cemetery, and The New York Ripper. Not that any of that matters, because at the end of the day, the movie is still a success for being the return of Bob. What's coming up next week? Will it be The Gates of Hell, City of the Living Dead, or Twilight of the Dead? <laughs> There's your answer. Watch how I do the spin, okay? Amazing Grace. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash stonedgremlinproductions. Follow us on Twitter at The Cinema Snob or check out our homepage at thecinemasnob.com.